This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. No. Nope. Y'all, y'all, y- just this stop. This is a sham. Welcome to DBL. Happy Monday, everybody. Looky here. All four of us are back. I United love it. It feels so good. Yeah, I heard the rumors we were going back to four people last week, and here we are. And you just showed up and everybody I love it. <laughs> He's not even I'm supposed ha- to be I'm here. I'm really happy I'm with my yeah. friends. I, you know, I like this. I like talking to y'all like this. I heard rumors about it. Mm-hmm. Quick story. These blinds broke over the weekend. I just have to share this because you reminded me. And I was on the phone with Home Depot, and I'm like, they measured wrong. You got to send somebody out. And I'm like, where's this girl? I'm like, well, just put her on the phone. They're like, she's not working today. I'm like, well, she worked tomorrow. And they're like, the schedule comes out tomorrow, so we'll find out what day she works next week. And I go, okay. And I hung up. And then after I go to my wife, I go, how does she know if she's got to work tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just- <laughs> So talk about just showing I'm like, how do you not know if somebody's working tomorrow? And I was like, oh, he got me. He pulled the wall. He got got me off the phone. You figured it out, though. Yeah, all right. That was a weird story. All right. There's apparently no (laughs) ill will between Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. Good transition there. Janet addressed the infamous Super Bowl halftime show in her two-part documentary that aired over the weekend. She said the whole thing was an accident that should not have happened. And despite Janet taking the fall for the incident, she and Justin are very good friends to this day. She added she urged Justin not to make a statement after the incident to try and protect him, but as we know, he did and used the term wardrobe malfunction. So I I, uh, actually watched this last night Mm. and I was very interested, very into the whole thing. There's more we're going to talk about later, but what do you think about the Justin Timberlake Super Bowl incident specifically? Yeah, Janet Jackson um, and, and we have this expectation of her, although we should not, is very forgiving. Black Twitter is not, okay? (laughs) People have been coming for Justin Timberlake's neck, and this is the reason why. If something happens in a very public forum, like the most public forum, like the Super Bowl. Or a TV show like this. Right, and there's all of this scrutiny, then you have to align as loud as you were aligned when the incident happened. I understand that Janet said to him, you know, hey, just stay out of this, whatever. But as it got louder, Mm. it became more problematic. He benefited Mm. from this incident and she was attempted to be silenced and blacklisted. Not only that, but Justin was not silent. He made statements. He said things that indicated that he didn't, he basically there was an interview with I think ET and he was talking about, um, I don't need to do this for publicity. That's not my thing, which implied that it was her thing. Mm -hmm. So when the fire and the smoke and everything was happening, he did nothing to help someone who clearly tried to protect him. Erica, that that's what I can't get past. I can't, if, if somebody on this panel reached to the person towards their right or their left and grabbed their clothing and ripped it from their body and then never addressed it? Just on this show, that would be a big deal. On the Super Bowl, where you were talking about a fork in the road of your career, to not explain that, I just thought was so strange. I've been trying to figure out why, and then she came out and kind of defended him. And if she's gonna be that ride or die for you, why didn't you from the beginning, Justin, just go, Here's the the move was I was going to reach over and what happens my hand got caught right. on a zipper. Just give give us something to go with rather than just staring at this weird display of what was that? Yeah, because if you're going to be on the same page of not talking, don't talk. Like Erica said, he didn't not talk. He spoke. And when you speak those statements, you're saying way more because she's in the quiet vacuum. So his was echoed even louder. I also have to say I was really shocked by how much Les Moonves, the head of CBS, blacklisted You Janet were shocked? Only because I was really putting all the blame on Justin. And I got this. Moonves ordered Viacom properties, all of Viacom, VH1 and MTV and every radio station to not play any of her stuff, to not allow any of that. I didn't know that. That was on me. And I realized now I he didn't had know that either. a full smear campaign. And Questlove said it, if you read his Twitter, this was really Moonves. 
which was crazy. I worked for CBS Radio during this time wow. in Chicago. Wow. And I can tell you that there was nothing favorable happening with Janet Jackson or about Janet Jackson. Specifically there her, were memos. Right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. Memos went out. So, yeah, the whole Les Moonves, well, you know, he already got his. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, speaking like I said, there was going to be more, and there was. Janet also defended her late brother, Michael Jackson, in the dock. Janet said she never believed the child abuse allegations against him, saying that Michael didn't have it in him to abuse a child. She did say she was guilty by association and lost a multi-million dollar deal with Coca-Cola in the process. She also said their relationship started to become strained after the success of his album Thriller, and she also thought recording the song Scream together would bring them closer, but it didn't because they shot the video separately. Janet was even blocked from his set. It was a weird thing. I felt like people were taking advantage when I was listening to the documentary, how they were separating them and one shot in a day and one shot at the night. That, there was a lot of things, little nuggets in there I didn't expect. Like Michael yeah. Jackson's people kept right. him, kept Janet away from him. Like his team blocked and her. And she kept saying, that's not how we grew up. That's not Ex family. No. But when you start talking about big amounts of money and now you're putting money or food on someone else's plate, that's going to fracture that relationship. Yeah, this uh, the whole the whole documentary. I just ended. I watched it twice. <laughs> like I watched it on Lifetime and A and E. <laughs> I think that there were some clips that were, were a different? little different, right. like uh, small little things. I could be wrong, but maybe I just wasn't paying attention the first time. I just walked away thinking. Janet Jackson is a saint. Yeah. I have always felt that way. She is like the most quiet, brilliant present with presence when she walks into a room. Um, she clearly has like, I think she might be the most altruistic person on the planet. Like, I don't think that she ever has any ill will or intentions no for bone. anybody. Yeah. And she absorbs that. She should not have to. And I also wonder if some of these things hadn't happened, which were very, I mean, the CBS thing was just like a small percentage of everything that has happened to her in regards to people taking advantage of her, using her name and then leaving her high and dry, mm. um, not knowing who to trust. Although I would argue that she maybe knows who to trust a little bit more than Michael did. Mm. Uh, but she, I just, I walked away thinking like, this woman is a saint. Mm. I did think her separation from Michael did give her some plausible deniability, which is probably good for her. Had she known anything, she also could have been in trouble with any kind of conspiracy. So that kind of helped her in the end to be separated. Going back to the incident at the Super Bowl, they had the choreographer on. I wish they would have said like, this was part of the routine or this was absolutely not part of the routine. Right. They didn't address they that. They said Justin yeah. went to a tailor and at some point, and there was a meeting between he and Janet without stylists in the room. And I would love to know what happened in that meeting. And that is mum. No one is speaking about it. But I dove Wait, deep on this. What? That wasn't in a documentary. No, I dove deep on this whole thing because I, I agree it, with yeah. you. They didn't ex just say yes or like, no. Let's come to a conclusion. Yeah, because it's here. really was it really meant to or not? Now there's these alleged alleged again that Justin spent time with a tailor that he had this idea. He asked to speak to Janet privately. They left the room. The stylist. There's always been this weird conversation: is did he plan it and sort of tell her at the very end, "I'm going to do this"? So I mean, that's a bold move. Just, just, Speaking, if Janet did not know, or he right. told her at the very end, would I ever end, right be like, before, "Hey, this right. is going to get us some ratings and try something like even remotely close to that to one of you <laughs> it's, on a television show?" It's that's crazy insane, to even right? just hypothesize right. doing that, and that's why we, we've spent the entire A block talking about this because Justin has not been clear about what happened. So we're all left to hypothesize about but why. But why wouldn't the choreographer say this was part of it? They showed that we're the well, but the choreographer did say that he didn't even wait for the applause. He ran, he ran. off the yeah, stage. And they also said that Janet was visibly upset yeah, she and left. crying as she immediately. So the idea that when when everything came out, it was like, oh, she, Janet, Jan which is, this is the funniest part to me. This is how, this is how funny, privileges, right? Janet Jackson, the legacy of not only the Jackson family, but also the fact that she's been doing this pretty much since she's been out of the womb, has sustained a career longer than most people in her industry, period, point blank. She was the one 
that needed to get her name out in the streets. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't know who Janet Jackson was. Like her legacy wasn't good. Her legacy continued post everyone trying to cancel her before cancellation was a thing. Mm. And she was the one that needed this. <laughs> and Jermaine Dupree so follows funny. up with that too. He's like, Janet doesn't need this. Right, like, right. He said right. That right after that. Well, and then him stepping down from the Grammy board. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that he was. But then that. Questlove yeah. going on to the Rock and Roll exactly. Hall of Fame board. That was also very interesting. Yeah, we too. almost forgot that Jermaine Dupree uh, messed around on Janet yeah. after he said that. We yeah. almost. But Black Twitter, <laughs> they, they remember. Not. They remember. And I got to be honest, who's Rebby Jackson? I didn't oh, know there was Reby, no Reby. Yeah. Re I didn't know. I was yeah. like, who's that? Who's yeah. Reby Jackson? Yes. I was like shocked. Keith yeah. Jackson. All right, we got to go. But man, a lot of nuggets in there. Huh? Yeah. There's another sister. Coming up on DBL, an actress from the hit show Bridgerton has a message for fans about commenting on her body. And Joe Rogan responds to the controversy over his podcast, the promise he's making to his listeners next. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by... So much is happening this week on DBL. You're not going to want to miss a day. Queer Eyes, Jonathan Van Ness, dishes on the Fab Five. The legendary Vivica A. Fox joins us live. Heartthrob, Tay Diggs, discusses his new children's book. And Jeopardy's Mayim Bialik stops by. Plus, sex therapist Dr. Tammy Nelson shares why monogamy is dead. This week is Can't Miss TV, only on DBL. Six. Of All right. Beings. Let me just tell you this. This is from page six. The stylist who prepped Janet Jackson's look, um, 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 Wayne Scott Lucas, told Timberlake insisted on doing something bigger than the performance. He wanted a quote reveal. So he wanted maybe a pearl g-string. She was going to be a rosha dress. He was going to reveal her butt maybe in the g-string. But the outfit changed a couple of days before. Of course, in the end. So there's this whole thing with the stylist who then said he was then asked to speak to Janet in private and I was asked to leave the room. So it, there's all these weird things that happen. I wish they had cleared that up. Yeah, and w I forgot who says in a documentary, like, dude, what's the big deal? When I was watching it, I was like kind of folding clothes. I'm like, Tyler what is Perry. the big, oh, that's Tyler a, yeah, what's Tyler like, Perry? It's a nipple, chill. Yeah, 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 and I was like, exactly. What is, I can't believe it got to the level but that they, it did. I mean, it, like, it, changed, not a nipple. it changed the FCC laws. And the conspiracies yeah. behind it. I, know. I was like, People went crazy. And remember if you guys, I don't, I'm sure Tiffany doesn't. I was at college when I watched okay. it and there was no, you can't go back 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. real, you couldn't go to YouTube. There was no thing that you could go to then see Janet Jackson. So you were like, did I just see what I thought I saw? And that sort of stirred yeah, everything up. it was halftime. I don't think most people, you know, watched that before. I think a lot of people got up and were in the kitchen drinking. Just, yeah. And just didn't. I was just like, did it happen or not? Yeah. Like, you can back. tell that that goes to show you how much a minority population, if they band together, can actually have make changes in that way. Because there were certain groups that were absolutely campaigning to make sure that Janet Jackson was punished or that there are repercussions and as a result like think about that yeah Next, today it would make sense it would have gone viral yeah right now it doesn't then, it didn't exactly right. Welcome back. There's been a lot going on with this Joe Rogan Spotify misinformation story we've been following. So Joni Mitchell and Nils Lofgren, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. From Springsteen's E Street Band have joined Neil Young in demanding their music be removed from Spotify because of podcasts on the platform like Joe Rogan, of course, that they say spreads spreads COVID misinformation. So Harry and Megan also expressed their concern the two have a huge deal to produce content for Spotify, which is reportedly worth $25 million. And Joe Rogan is finally responding to all of this. He posted a 10 minute video to Instagram. Here's some of what he said. And I'm not trying to promote misinformation. I'm not trying to be controversial. I've, I've never tried to do anything with this podcast other than just talk to people. My pledge to you, is that I will do my best to try to balance out these more controversial viewpoints with other people's perspectives so we can maybe find a better point of view. All right, Tori, we've been going back and forth. What do you think about his response? I think it's fine. I think it's fair. I like what they did. 
Again, I want to make this very clear. I like freedom of speech, and I like freedom of speech for speech I don't like, things I disagree with hardly. I want that to be part of the conversation. But specifically, medical misinformation to me is like yelling fire in a theater. It is unprotected, it is dangerous, clear and present danger, and sometimes speech like that inciting a riot is not protected. To me, that's where this goes. In a global pandemic, you need to monitor medical misinformation. That, to me, shouldn't have been protected. If they're gonna put a disclaimer and he's gonna try to do better and have more uh, uh, balanced people on there, great. I don't want Joe Rogan to go away. I just want the medical misinformation like Dr. Malone saying we all were hypnotized to take the vaccine. That's not great right now. Yeah. And so that specifically is what Neil Young disliked. And I think he had a very strong point and they lost $4 billion in stock, which is a lot. So again, I'm happy Joe Rogan is on. He can talk about whatever he wants. Nazis can walk through Skokie, Illinois because of freedom of speech in this country. And I'm okay with that as a Jew. So please know I'm very okay with it. What I'm not okay is the misinformation that could be dangerous and lethal to people. And that specifically needed to be tied up. Yeah, it, I, it's just such a weird situation because when Joe, I've been listening to Joe since the beginning and uh, I've trailed off in the last couple of years, but he originally was just talking to his friends, artists, entertainers, scientists about their life, their studies, their careers. And I, I think because of that, people have listened to this for hours and hours, days and days, weeks and weeks. You think this is a conversation from somebody I trust. And then there is this element where now they're starting to talk about things that you need to be an expert in. I don't have a point of view about if you're on heart medication. I don't have a point of view, Erica, on rebuilding your brake lines. I don't know anything about that. So for me to pontificate about right, that on a platform where hundreds of millions of people are right. listening to it, but it's said like I'm an expert is where the danger is. If you have an opinion, you think everybody's an alien Fine. or dinosaur eggs are underneath us, cool. great. But when you start talking about health in a country where a ton of people are uninsured it's it's very it's it's it very treacherous territory it's, in it's, the it's, middle of a pandemic right, right. The global, that's a crosses the line right how, how'd you feel joe um, well, Spotify did respond, and they are going to start putting warning and disclaimers mm -hmm. on his show, which is which That's is fine. It's good for me. Yeah, it's good. But I mean, you also have to listen with discernment, right? Like I listen to Joe Rogan. There's ones that I, I just look at the thing. There's too much content. It's three hours, three times a week, whatever it is. I'm like, I don't want to hear this person. I don't want to hear this person. Oh, they're interviewing uh, Kanye. I want to hear that one. Right. You know what I mean? So I go through and pick and choose what I listen to Joe Rogan. My thing is, is like everyone kicking back to Spotify. He made Spotify. He put those stocks up there. You could listen to music anywhere. I don't think you have to go to Spotify. You just press in Neil Young and you have 50 different outlets to listen to it. So these people are just trying to make a stance. I don't think they're try monetizing, you know, it's not gonna hurt them in any way. But people saying like, I'm not, I'm gonna leave Spotify. Leave. If Joe Rogan leaves, now you have a big problem because you're the, he's number, they're number one because of Joe Rogan. Well, what if Taylor Swift says, I'm joining but Neil Taylor Young? But Taylor Swift doesn't do a three and a half hour song and Joe Rogan But Taylor does. Swift is the queen and of Spotify. And I think that that's not, not Clearly not anymore. They, she didn't have a $100 million deal with them. I don't think I she's think, the queen of Spotify. They I think were number one until Joe Rogan Swift went there. threatened to pull her music from Spotify, you don't think there would be an it's issue? It's just an advertising numbers game. One person does a four-hour show. How many commercials can you fit in there? And one person makes a popular song that's three and a half minutes. I don't think it's even close. I think it is. I think they would pull. I think t once you get a domino effect, which we're kind of getting, Joni Mitchell, Brene Brown, the motivational Ooh, how speaker. How you don't listen to Joni Mitchell? Where's the last Joni Mitchell conversation agreed, you had? Agreed. A Neil Young conversation agreed, you had? Agreed, but what I'm saying is that creates a domino effect of other people. So E Street Band, the guy N uh, Nils Lofgren, now that's begging the question, will Bruce Springsteen? That's what I was going to say. What if Bruce is like, hey, they're listen, gonna I domino, like Jeff. They're going to domino. And I think domino. that's why they jumped in and did I something. I agree. I think they were trying to be like, we hear you. We're going to try and stop this now. So we'll see. Listen, those guys have money. When you talk about, listen, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Those guys have money. We, we all know. The IRS began accepting 2021 tax returns on January 24th, but the agency is still trying to finish millions of 2020 taxes. Many of them are paper returns, which are taking months to process. And as Americans get ready to file their taxes, a top Google search trend is the question, how long is it taking the IRS to process paper returns? So let's verify. Are you more likely to receive your refund faster if you file your 2021 tax return electronically? Our sources are the IRS, accounting firm Keystone CPAs, and national taxpayer advocate Aaron Collins, an independent ombudsman within the Department of Treasury.
Last summer, Collins's office found the average paper return took about twice as long to process compared to an electronic return. In her annual report to Congress this January, she said the IRS was excruciatingly slow at processing some paper returns. She found some cases where it took weeks just to open an envelope and up to eight months for paper filers to get their refund. Meanwhile, electronic returns begin processing within a few hours, and most taxpayers receive their refund in a few weeks. The Advocate's Office blames multiple factors for the backlog, like Congress requiring the IRS to divert resources to COVID-19-related issues, including the processing of stimulus checks. Keystone CPAs recommend its clients file electronically and encourage them to use direct deposit to receive their refund even quicker. So, it's true, you are more likely to receive your refund faster if you file your 2021 tax return electronically. Of course, that's not possible for all individuals or businesses, such as returns that require attaching lengthy documentation. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. Bridgerton actress Nicola Coughlin is asking her fans to stop talking about her body. Nicola, who plays Penelope Featherington, Featherington that you got it. <laughs> on, hit, on the hit Netflix show, posted a lengthy message to her fans on Instagram. In the post, she asked them to stop sharing their opinions on her body while her while with her. While most people are being nice and not trying to offend, she said the fans often send her direct messages on how she looks and she finds that hard to take. Hmm. Yeah, there's this weird thing in society where if you don't look like the traditional, what has been celebrated, supermodel, whatever, people want to come to you and be like, you know what? You are beautiful. <laughs> you are deserving of love and admiration. And you're kind of like, oh, well, I kind of felt like that anyway. But now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have because you need to qualify this. Like, it's weird. It is weird, especially when you are showcasing a gift. Her gift is to bring a character to life that is not about her. It's about the character. If you are concentrating on what she physically looks like, and that is her physical aesthetic, then you aren't really appreciating the gift that she is trying to share with the world. That's true. And I also thought she and Jonah Hill did a nice, I'm dealing with boundaries. I'm reading a book called Set Boundaries, Find Peace. What have you learned so far? That she very politely no from you like what oh oh someone tried to get me on a go, go on a boat with them and i didn't want to go and they kept pushing and i said no and they kept pushing and i said hold no hold on hold on get recently yeah Okay, could you elaborate? Just, we live in Colorado, so that's a it was, whole it, it's a good, it's a wonderful cousin of mine. I love her, but she really wanted me to go on her boat ride, and I didn't want to go because it was cold. And my book was like, there are people that will test, she didn't mean it in any harmful way, but that will test your boundaries. And when they do, Tori always caved. As soon as you pushed, I caved. I was like sand. And the boundary book was like, no, politely reaffirm your sentence. I really don't want to go again. Thanks again for doing that. They push again. Again stated, I really don't want to do this again. That was new to me. And what she said was very polite and simply said, please don't uh, come at me. I don't want to hear it anymore. End of discussion. Not much you can do with that. That's a good ending. That's a good boundary. All right. I was so confused because we're talking about fans writing her. And I thought a fan <laughs> tried to get you on a boat. And I want to know how that all started. And then you just switched to your cousin. I was like, but what Jeff, conversations couldn't it have are been you? a fan knowing yes, Tori? Yes, of course. Absolutely. And I wanted to address it on air and be like, hold on, Tori. You're talking to people about going on a boat. I I have been invited to some wedding. With Christopher Walker. I have been invited. No. <laughs> no, never that. Allegedly. 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 Yeah, so no. I, was, I wanted to get to the bottom of no that. Fans. That's where I was going. No fans. That. Thanks for rubbing that in. No fans. No, I wasn't rubbing it in. <laughs> I know. I was okay. somebody like, else's fans. Don't yeah. entertain these conversations. <laughs> hey, Jeff, do you want to go to Disneyland? <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. And that's a no, by the way. <laughs> Promotional consideration is brought to you by... I'm Ariane Daytel. And I'm Brandon Lewis. We're the national hosts of Verify. The federal government started mailing free at-home COVID-19 tests and distributing face masks, which prompted us to fact-check several claims that started circulating, including a rumor that would-be robbers are handing out chemical-laced masks if free masks are available yet at local pharmacies, 
and whether the CDC counts at-home COVID-19 test results in its case data. Soon after, President Joe Biden announced a plan to distribute free N95 masks, a post began circulating on social media and by text. It claims to be a police bulletin and warns people are going door to door handing out masks laced with chemicals that knock you out so they can rob you. So let's verify. Are these crimes actually happening? We checked with these sources for an answer. It turns out versions of this post have circulated for almost two years. We found police agencies around the world have posted there are no documented cases in their communities. Kalamazoo, Michigan deputies labeled the post false information and believe whoever created it is intentionally trying to scare the public. So we can verify there's no evidence robbers are handing out masks doused with chemicals as claimed in a bogus police bulletin. Speaking of the federal government's N95 mask giveaway, Verify viewer Susan asked us, are free N95 masks available at your local drugstore and how many do you get? So Susan, let's verify. We went to these sources for an answer. The White House says the masks will go to tens of thousands of pharmacies and thousands of community health centers nationwide. Some regional stores like Meyer in the Midwest have confirmed they already have the masks in store, while other major chains, including CVS, Walmart and Walgreens, say they expect to start giving out masks in the next few weeks. The Department of Health and Human Services says you're limited to three masks per person, although details on how pharmacies will track these masks isn't available just yet. So it's true. Free N95 masks are available at your local drugstore, or they will be in the next few weeks. While you're at the drugstore, you may be able to pick up a COVID-19 test. The federal government ordered private insurance companies to create a network of pharmacies to distribute tests free of charge or reimburse people up to $12 per test. Verify viewer Judy reached out to us on Facebook to ask whether the CDC counts at-home test results. So Judy, let's verify. Does the CDC count positive results from at-home COVID-19 tests in its case data? Here are our sources. The CDC tells Verify that it recommends people who test positive on a home test report the results to their doctor, who may order a second in-office test. However, the agency says, quote, the U.S. government cannot require the reporting of over-the-counter test results, and because self-tests cannot be verified, the data from self-testing is unreliable for public health analysis and action, unquote. So, no, the CDC does not count positive test results from at-home COVID-19 tests in its case data. Some state or local agencies are requesting but not mandating people report positive at-home results online. If there's something you want verified, send it to us. We'll see you back here next week with answers to more of your questions verified. Welcome back. Before we go, we have some sad news. Actor Howard Hessman passed away over the weekend due to complications from a previous surgery. He was just 81. He was best known, of course, for playing the DJ Dr. Johnny Fever on WKRP in Cincinnati in the 70s and 80s, and he received two Emmy nominations for his role and had a lifelong friendship with his co-star Lonnie Anderson. Later, he starred as Mr. Yeah. Charlie Moore on the sitcom Head of the Class and made several guest history. appearances right. on sitcoms Beautiful. over the year. What it, to me, this is the career I've always wanted when I started. Absolutely. Because you're like, I know that guy, he's part of my childhood, but you don't really know who he is. That's, to me, a great right celebrity Right under the radar. Life, right? Way to go. All right, DBL's new every day. We'll see you guys tomorrow.